get up from the paint shop, I'm driving, I'm going to get myself something to eat on Little York. I stop at the church's chicken. <laughs> right. I go to the window, I'm like, hey, I want that number two, you know what I'm saying, with lemonade, et cetera, et cetera, right? She acting like she got an attitude with me on the other side of the thing. I don't know who this is. I'm like, okay. I pull up to the window, guess who I see? Crystal with the blonde hair. So I'm already smiling, like, because I'm, I'm shining clean, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm jamming that slow loud bang and all the animatronics. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm, saying? I'm, 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 I'm beat, you know what I'm saying? So then, she's got an attitude already because I know she had dreams to be this model and this big, super famous person, and she didn't expect me to see her in the window in Church's Chicken, right? So, I'm like, I only got $100 bills. So I pull out a hundred dollar bill and I say, here you go. And she gives me my food, I mean my money back, and she says, your change is uh, $90.13. And I say, nah, my change is $92.13. Off of the head, right? And then she says, oh, my bad. And then I started to think, maybe the reason I learned math that I can think off of my head and calculate my money that quick that's the reason why you on the other side of that window and I'm rolling down the window on this car right here, man. <laughs> so at that moment, it taught me, like, all the people that was really, really cool in school, them ended up being the squares when I got older. Everybody that was the best basketball player, everybody that had the most girls, everybody that was the coolest in school when I got older, I'm, I'm supposed to be the nerd. I'm on the stage and I'm looking at them front row at my shows they didn't need to get in. So that's just a one quick example of how important this moment is in your life right now. Right now, you can go two different ways. You can go this way or this way. You don't want to go this way. You want to go the right way. And the right way is to study and learn as much as you can. The more information you put into your head, the more great you're going to be later. I don't care if it's your business manager and she's trying to not take some money out of your pocket. You're going to be up in the county and know that she's not. I don't care if it's your family. You're going to be more educated than everybody around you. Don't make no excuses if everybody in your family ain't graduated from college or made good grades. You can be that one exception to that rule. Now, I don't want to be the person that came up here and said I was your role model and convinced y'all to do this. You should want to do this for yourself. You should want to make good grades. I don't care if everybody in here is telling you that you a square. Who's the nerdiest person in here? Can somebody point that person out? <laughs> nah, man. I don't believe you're the nerdiest person in here. <laughs> Whoever is the nerdiest person in here, if you are here, you will be the most successful one in here, man. You gonna pass that test? You gonna pass it? Hey, Mr. Smith, you gonna let me come back if everybody. I only associate myself with winners, so I only can chill and hang with the people that pass. You know what I'm saying? Is that cool, Mr. Smith? Alright, listen, McDuffie. You promised me you gonna pass that test, right? Let me see. Let me see. You know what I did, man? I just, I just, 
I this weekend, he called me and he told me he don't do. I was like, man, I gotta get on this flight because Juvenile was supposed to do a show in Canada. And Juvenile went to jail. Yeah, he got arrested over some tickets or something and went to jail. So they called me and they other said, you wanna come do this show? I said, yeah, I wanna come do this show. How much you gonna give me? He told me how much he's gonna give me. I got on that plane, went to Canada, went and did the show, and flew all the way back here to come here right now. See, that's why my shirt's still wrinkled, man. <laughs> so, if you wanna be a baller, and then I was actually gonna take my hat off, man. I was gonna take my hat off, take my chain off, because I know how you're supposed to do in school. And when I was in school, they said, oh, no, you can't wear no hat. But y'all got to follow the rules. I made it to a place in my life where I could make the rules. You know what I'm saying? So if you wanna be a boss, you wanna be a baller, you better pay attention now, man. You better get these grades straight. I have, in my last story, I have a, a, a person in my family, a, a stepbrother, and um, he's still in school right now. For all his friends that made it out of school. And you know why all his friends that made it out of school? Because every time I call him, I'll be like, what you doing? He said, man, I'm about to go hit this party. He don't never study, he never does. He's a very smart kid, but he thinks he's too good for studying. And all his friends that might not be as bright as him made it out of school. And he's still in school and got student loans up to his neck. Now, he drives a broke down Honda Civic with, uh, uh, what's that, a donut on one wheel? He ain't even got the donut up on one wheel. But keep in mind, he my stepbrother. He's supposed to be balling, he's supposed to be in the family. But you know why he ain't in no family? Because he expect me to do it, and life is about his decisions. He the one that got himself in that position. He could be rich right now, but because he decided he don't want to study and he want to be too cool and he want to chase girls all around, he's in a Honda. There's nothing wrong with a Honda if that's what you want. But if you want to have the best girlfriend, you want to have the best life, you want to have the biggest house, you want to take care of your parents, your mother, whatever your reasons are, right now is the time that you need to take charge of your life. You hear me? Amen. <laughs> he said, Amen. Now listen, listen, one more thing, man. I'll be honest with y'all. I was at, uh, I was about to talk to some kids from, uh, what school is that? It was uh, South Falls the other day, right? And I told them that I was going to come here. And you know what they told me? They told me, don't come there because kids at that school are conceited. They said that kids at this school are conceited. Now look, I'm going to prove to you. I just want to thank the millionaire for coming and speaking to you today. There are two more people I want to thank because they kind of made it possible for me to connect to the millionaire. One is Felicia Brown. Get in the back, Miss Felicia. And I don't know if Mike saw stay tonight. Mike is still out there. Okay, Mike is not here. But these are the people that are responsible for me to connect back with one of my former students. I've been trying to do this for many, many years and finally did it. And I'm telling you what, guys, he did not change a word. I called him, I asked him what he did. He says, anything for you, Mr. Smith. So I'm really, really grateful and thankful for that. If I could talk to you a little bit about influence. You see how influence works? This guy said he's 30 years old. Obviously, you know, he's made lots of money, more than I have, for sure. And he's really, really famous and all of that. But look at the influence. I want to tell each one of you that you have the same influence. Be it on your friends, be it on your brother and sister, or be it on those teachers that are around you. You have the same influence. So as we come back tomorrow and we prepare to take the tax test, I want everyone in here that can hear him today to be commended. So the next time when he comes back, we'll plan for that. When he comes back, you'll be able to get a backstage pass for him, and you'll be able to get a signed autograph, and he'll sing a little song for you. You're not going to sing anything now. You're only going to play the music for him.